Hello and welcome back to another one of my videos with regards to how to set up a flex connector with ArcSight. So I, I just want to recap on a few things. So we've gone through and we've created the, the actual file, we've created the regex to do the processing, uh, we've actually just double checked things, make sure we got all the fields mapped as well. So what I do need to do is just have a quick review of a couple of things with regards to files and locations of things. As I walk through that creation of the configuration file, the properties file, that's all you're doing, you're creating a file. Uh, I also mentioned a couple of other files or locations I should mention. Uh, so first off, I'll talk about the agent.properties. So when you do install any connector, it'll go into a, a file structure. So uh, the file structure here is starting with this slash opt slash arc site. I'm just installing this on Linux from a simplicity point of view, rather than having to jump backwards and forwards between Linux and Windows or Mac or whatever. Uh, and I've actually installed this particular connector in this folder. So you'll often hear about people talking about connectors and, and using things like uh, user agent folder or the current folder and so on. So uh, the configuration files are, are deposited in this user agent folder uh, and specifically we're looking at this agent.properties file here uh, if I just uh, again review quickly review over this again so more agent Dot properties. This is just a configuration file, nothing more. Uh, so we can see that the configuration file that we want to use is this flex file. Remember, this is what we defined when we did the original setup for this. Uh, it, it's actually going to be having some destinations, which is sending it to ESM. Uh, we've got some further information here to do with, for example, um, rename in same directory. Remember, this is a regex file folder. So it's looking for files in that folder, and it's going to rename them with an extension of process. Again, Again, this is just simple changes I could make here. Uh, step down a little bit further, we can see what are we looking for. So we're looking for the wild card for the files. Again, I strongly recommend double checking all the configuration options that are available to you. It's all in that uh, Flex Connector Guide, the PDF uh, documentation. So I do strongly recommend. But that's what's telling the connector to do. It's not telling it how to process. So again, if I just do uh, show you where we are a second. Now, if you remember when we ran that regex uh, tool, it actually created that flex file, uh, a parser file effectively, and it actually put it into a specific location. Uh, so if I just show you what that is, it actually deposits it into this flex agent folder here. Uh, so if we just go CD flex agent, and we'll see the files in here. Uh, it's a little bit longer, so it wraps around the, uh, the little terminal session I have here. Remember we called it flex file. Uh, so it actually, it's, it's quite good now. It didn't used to do this before, but uh, for the last few releases, it actually keeps a, a temporary version and a backup version just in case it gets corrupted or there's errors out and issues. But this is the actual file that's the, the properties file. So flex file, which is what we gave it as a name. Now it's important to note this here. This is the name of the type of the parser. It is very, very critical you spell this correctly. So uh, SDK, so Software Developers Kit, probably should be a better name than that. R, regex, uh, and in this example it's doing file reader. Uh, that's not necessarily what we're doing we're actually doing a flex um, regex flex folder uh, but you'll notice again in the documentation these naming structures are critical to tell it what kind of connector it is so if it's a file it's an SDK file reader if it's a regex uh, log file is SDKR it's the same for SDKR but it's the agent.properties file that tells it what to read database uh, it's SDKT DB database. So it's very critical you get that naming structure correct with regards to how you define uh, that particular connector file uh, for processing. But again, let's just recap what we did there. So let's look at the actual file, flex file, SDKR, file reader properties. So this is all we created. We didn't create any program file or anything. So we created the regex. Now, remember when we did this, so you'll notice there's double slashes here. This is because we need to uh, escape out, or the phrases escape out, uh, this regex. We can't just list it in. We need to have that in there so it doesn't actually look for a match of that slash character. We're actually saying escape out, 
then slash s plus, for example. So it, it will handle that translation for you automatically. You don't need to put double slashes or anything. If you remember when we went through this from the GUI, uh, it didn't actually need us to do that. We just put it in and it, it actually created the file for us. So that's okay. Uh, you can see that we actually passed out six tokens. Remember, we start with token zero. So you'll see there's a total of five. Uh, we've given it a logical name and we're given it a type. Uh, remember we did the parsing out of the time uh, that was okay uh, just to make sure that you get the format of there but the other bits of data we're doing here is it's strings anyway so that's okay uh, and then from there all you do is set the event for the field name again the fields are all documented in the flex configure uh, flex connector configuration guide as well the, the developers guide and then we just give it the label the the logical name that we've given it and we just add the data in. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and where relevant, we've put in these uh, uh, particular, this particular string constants. We can do further processing as well as there if we wanted to. So that's okay. Uh, very simple, very straightforward, nothing more sophisticated as that. Now, the important thing is, uh, if I just again just show you the location here, we're in this flex agent folder. Uh, when we did the installation of the connector, it knows that it's a regex file folder follower so it knows to look in this particular folder it's got the right name uh, for the actual type of connector so we're ready to go uh, and in fact actually we can we can just quickly do that straight away what i do need to do i can run this from the command line so we can actually just go back to the current folder and then go to bin um, you Typically, we'll run this as a service, clearly, but this is a test environment. So I'm actually just going to run the connector uh, directly. Uh, to run it, it's just arcsight command structure, and then agents tells it to run the, the actual connector itself. And uh, we just run that, and it'll start the connector. Uh, it's useful here because we can actually look at uh, the debug messages as we see them, as they appear. So we can see there uh, the connector thinks it's down it's not communicating to ESM at the moment uh, but it will do in a minute um, first event four so it's actually that's the connector itself uh, created all streams and readers for this particular file remember that was the file we set uh, to, to actually read the folder that's in there that we're reading uh, and then it's actually seen a first event from access door access system received so it's actually done something uh, so it's processed the file it's looked in the folder it's uh, matched the wildcard. Remember, I just showed that wildcard was star, so it's going to match anything in there, uh, and we'll see that uh, execute. What I can do is I'll just bring up another terminal session here, and let's just go to uh, arc site. Flex file. Remember, we put this in flex file source. That was in the, one of the original uh, videos that we talked about. Uh, we take a look in here, and hey presto, we've actually renamed the file processed. Uh, if I was to change that, it would reprocess the file again. So just be double careful uh, when you're doing rename in folder or delete or anything like that. If you put the same file back in, it doesn't necessarily know it's the same file again, and it'll reprocess that. That is different to if you're pressing a specific file. Uh, typically, like a log file with an older versions of things like uh, IIS, uh, for example, where it's just a single file and it appends to the end of the file, you're looking for those new records. That's when you would look at things like the agent.properties file and look for things like this start at end. Again, it's documented as well, so I would recommend looking at that too. So that's all good. Uh, let me just jump back to my connector there. We can see that uh, the connections to uh, the actual ESM system is up. Uh, we can see that. So just for reference, if you didn't know this, ET, event thread, uh, is up. So that's the uh, thread that sends the events through. And HT is heartbeat thread, and that is up too. Uh, just for reference here as well, uh, it calculates the EPS rates for that particular time period, so around about two and a half, because uh, it, it sends it in bulk and hasn't done anything since. And there was about 155 messages that we've sent through there as well. So uh, we've got data that's been sent through, so let's take a look. So I've just brought up the console here. I, I've done again. I've done it in Linux here just to save jumping backwards and forwards with different versions of operating systems and and so on. Um, so just as again, if you didn't know this, 
cheaty way of doing this. So if I can go to my connectors, remember I did a, a basic install of this so we can see this flex file demo. Uh, that's what I configured it as, This the original connector. Uh, you can actually just right mouse click, so select create channel with filter. Uh, that creates a channel for that and it just basically uh, reads anything that's matching that particular connector ID. And hey presto, there's my events. Remember when we did the processing, when we looked at the original source file, uh, it actually had uh, the 20th of December uh, set as the year within that. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Now they, I've actually recorded this in the following year. And this is a really good example of how to be very cautious when doing some of this uh, processing. So I do actually have an error here. So you can see that it actually says, uh, uh, if I hover over it there, it says 2018. So of course, when I created this, it was the end of 2017, and the event was from December 2017. Uh, now I've received it, it's just taken the current year, which is 2018. Uh, so we can see that uh, that's not going to be particularly great for us. So we're going to need to correct that. We're going to need to go back to our connector and change that to make sure that we add the correct time in there as well uh, and process the events. That's one of the common issues you get when you have an event that's been incorrectly passed or doesn't include the year, for example, around the timestamp. However, from a demonstration point of view, we're good to go. Uh, we can see that the, the actual uh, time has come in. We can see the name. Uh, we didn't have any IP addresses, remember? We didn't have anything to process on there. So let's just take a look at one of these and look in a bit more detail. Let me shuffle this back a little bit. So we've got a little bit more real estate. Uh, we can see that this is a base event. Uh, it's come from a particular location. Uh, scroll down a little bit further. Uh, we can see our device action was admitted, uh, class ID was out, device vendor, device product, this is just text that we applied, uh, the source there, so we can see this has come from a particular uh, host name, which is what we wanted to call it for the, for the source there, and the username and the uh, ID, and of course any mapping that would have been done, remember the mapping for attacker and target will be done at ESM, not at the connector level, so it considers now that that source is the attacker uh, for reference purposes, but it doesn't really matter in this example. Uh, and then we can scroll down a little bit further and see all the zone information and so on. So we can see that we've done that processing, we've got the data in the relevant fields, and now actually creating rules and so on is actually pretty simple and straightforward. So that's a very quick final summary, a step through the process of actually creating that connector, doing a test environment, uh, doing the regex, processing the event files, uh, getting it into ESM, like I said, a little bit of cheat, you can just right mouse click and go into the active channel to see that for the events. That's a really good example, again, just to make sure, of course, my manager receipt time is today, but the, uh, the actual end time, the time the event was created was in this case, it was supposed to be the 20th of December 2017, but it's come as a 2018 because it's applied the current year. So just be aware of that. So if I had an active channel that was looking at the last hour's worth of events, I would see none of these. So just bear that in mind because it would do it on the event on the end time, not the manager receipt time. So just consider that when you're doing some of this testing and making sure the events get processed. Um, I will correct that and I'll come back to doing some use case scenarios around this too. So thank you very much for your time.